Hello and welcome back to assembling the baby deer. The baby deer limbs. I needed to replace my gloves because when epoxy gets on your gloves, it is soon over. The gloves become pretty useless because the bones, the little ones, stick to them. And then you take them back with you and it's a terrible tug of war. And I'm being dramatic. But it is annoying. I will be fighting with the gloves and the epoxy very shortly. But until then, let's assemble some more bones. Now, I found these um, little curved ones. And I think they go on this curvature right here. Um, for baby deers, uh, for baby anything, of course, um, nothing's really fused yet. See? On an adult, this will be one bone. On a baby deer, it is four. So, yay, we found another piece that fit. And this will, of course, go faster as there are fewer pieces, but I'm not going to lie. This job and putting the little pieces together can be tedious. I'm not sure why I'm broadcasting it on the internet, but I happen to really like my job. And I happen to really like bones. And no matter how many jokes you make about that, I'm talking about the skeleton. Um, you know, not that you're not allowed to make jokes. I'm not allowed to make jokes because I work for a university. You go right ahead. But what we're going to do is thoroughly coat the part that will be attached and let go. Let go. Let go. And voila. This piece fits. You can always tell the difference between something that can fit and does fit. And this does fit. It has a little bit more glue on it than I'd like, so I'm going to very carefully hold that on and nudge some of it off, because otherwise I'll be carving at dried epoxy with a scalpel because, you know, not that I'd call myself OCD, oh, well, I have no idea if I am, but I definitely pay attention to detail when it comes to these. Now we're also doing bone repair, like I said before because um, baby bones decalcify, so they're actually pretty easy to damage while you're cleaning, at least if you have to clean thoroughly, which I did have to. So I'm just going to seal that up, you know, with some epoxy to see if it'll last a little longer and not keep cracking apart. Give it some support. Babies need support. All young things need support baby plants, baby deer, baby deer skeletons. Mm -hmm. That I might scrape with a scalpel and that fell off. My own fault, my own fault. I shouldn't have been moving it around like that. But so it doesn't do it again, I'm going to prop this off to the side while it dries in a position where um, See, these are dry, so I'll move that there. See? I'm going to prop it up so that the uh, wet bone stays on top and doesn't have to experience any gravity till, till later. So, more of these. Now we find an interesting shape and we try it on the ends, like say these. This is a nice interesting shape, right? I'm curious about what these go to. So don't think to that. I'm gonna try these instead. 
And yeah, I could be sitting here with a manual. It'll tell me how to do everything. But, I don't know. I like finding the pieces on my own. I really do. It's a puzzle to me. It's my favorite puzzle. Nope. That doesn't fit. put the other one of these on. Now that would be silly, since I have two of each if I didn't just go ahead and put the one I knew about on. Who does that? Watch out for people who huff epoxy. might do weird things to skeletons. I put on way too much on that one. I just don't like wasting it. I don't know. Sometimes it's very difficult to control how much comes out of the bottle. You've got to be careful. Also careful not to misplace your pieces before it dries. Or, you know, I'm just gonna shut up and build bones, okay? Slowly brush it off. Put this to the side to dry. On the side where the wet bone is at. And this is really, it's kind of easy, believe it or not. It's kind of easy if you got the patience for it. If you have, you know, the desire to know what goes where, you'll figure it out. You don't really have to be an expert to get started on something like this, if you're interested in it. I think these parts are probably more fun before you're the expert, you know? I'm definitely not an expert yet. I just really like skeletons. <laughs> and when I first started assembling them, my professor was impressed and hired me. It's really easy to get something like this, because every, every time I talk to someone, uh, like it, or someone who who likes to hear about it, and they ask me questions, they say, how, how do you possibly get a job like that? Well, it's really easy. You can either do it yourself and sell or donate the products, or, uh, you know, in my case, uh, well, there are museums that offer jobs like it, but um, in my case, I went to my college and they gave me a job doing it. Someone, you know, one of the professors was looking for someone who didn't mind having their hands on a corpse or a couple. There's one, yay! Happy time, happy time, we found a bone. Okay. Um, no, I'm not gonna stop being weird, but I'm going to try and stop singing. Okay, so, yay, we know where this goes. I'm pretty sure it goes on this one, facing this direction, because it fits a little too perfectly not to. But just in case, we're gonna check the other one. Nope, that does not fit. See, look, it looks like it could be the same shape, but there's a huge gap right there. It just doesn't work out. 
but it's considerably more snug on this one. So we glue. We glue. I really need to stop singing too. It's embarrassing me. It's true. All right. More epoxy! Less epoxy! Less epoxy! Try not to be as careless as I am with the glue. You don't want to keep buying it and keep buying it. You want to keep it to, you know, one or two an animal max if it's a small one. One or two max. And there we go. It fits. Now we put it to the side to dry. I'm going to prop that one up a little bit. Nope, that's not a proper. Okay, so since that one fit, we just take the other one and find a similar shape, which every time I say that, the similar shape hides, so we'll see if that actually happens this hour, this day. Yep, there it is. Okay, good. I was exaggerating a little. Um, that does not look like it fits. Weird. Uh oh. Hope I didn't just make a terrible mistake. No, wait. Okay. That fits. It's just missing a little part. Okay. Yay! Which I think it fits. Uh oh. Hmm. Alright, while the glue is wet, real quick, I'm going to test. See which one fits better. That doesn't seem to fit that very well. It's loose and wobbly. So we're gonna stick that one back on. It's not a, it's not as much a gap in between. It's not so wobbly. So let's stick that back on and put it to the side and hope <laughs> that it stays put after the abuse I just gave it. And if not, well, I guess there's more epoxy. There's always more epoxy to ruin her noses. I don't like the fit on that one so much, so I'm gonna look for a couple others. As in, I'm gonna look at some other bones put them together. That and I just lost that piece. So. Hmm.
Ah, there it is. I don't know, what do you think? I'm a very much... It has to... F it has to really look like it fits in order for me to want to glue it. Because once you glue it with the epoxy and the, the epoxy dries, you're going to have to chisel it with a, a little scalpel or something really pointy and thin to get it off. But I don't really see what else this could go to. So. I'll even try it on one of these. Nope. All right. Well, if it's not the right one, then I'll just have really emphasized a point, and you will see what kind of trouble it takes to remove it. Lapping glue. It's a lot of glopping glue. It's a lot of glopping glue. Quite stubborn. See, I don't like that gap, but you know, the front here does look like it fits. It does. So I'm gonna give it a chance. But I need to prop this up on something. Probably upwards. Nope, nope, never mind, I do not. I'm gonna have, I push something up against the surface of it so that it stays on. Hopefully I just didn't get any epoxy on the other thing. Cause wow, that's fun when that happens. I like to start with the bigger, the bigger pieces. Helps me better see the smaller ones. weird. Looks like that fits. But it doesn't. Alright. So we need to find whatever goes there. Whatever goes there. And the piece fell off. That will do that. See, they'll just randomly tip over. Sometimes you'll have done nothing to provoke it. Nothing at all. And it'll just tip right over. And then there goes your nice, tedious work all over the table. And you'll say, why? Why did I like detailed work. I could be putting up with some schlub right now as he demands coffee exactly his way or his anchovies on the side. Not, not to be sexist. Schlubs, schlubs can be male or female. I promise. I tried tried restaurant work. Turns out, you know, I just wanted to take everyone apart in the lab. So I went somewhere where I could do that. I'm going to prop this one over here against something else. And 
hope. And hope and hope and hope. Please don't tip over. Anything with a curve. Anything with a curve on it will drive you mad. Eventually you will be a mad scientist. You cannot assemble skeletons without being a little mad. Even if it is just angry. Angry and fed up. But not as much as with living people, so I'm okay. I like the challenge of doing it without looking at diagrams and things like that. It's so much fun. It does take longer. But it's fun. That does not go. Alright, so let's do the really tiny ones. Talk about an exercise in tedium. See these um, phalanges? Each of these has a piece up top that's missing. That when it is a an adult, that piece will be fused with it. This one is going to be easy, except that there are more phalanges than pretty much any of the other bones right here, so um, pretty obviously it, it looks like, you know, this goes with this, or it could go. See? That's a could fit, but you see how the ends overlap? That's, uh, it doesn't fit, because it's not the right size, it's not exactly the right shape. That's the great thing about bones. Unlike any other puzzle piece, unlike any other puzzle, well, I guess not entirely unlike any other puzzle, but, you know, the right piece fits. The wrong piece isn't going to. You're going to be able to tell the difference. That's why just about anyone could do this. That could fit there, but it doesn't. So find another one. Could fit, but doesn't. Just find, you know, we know the shape. So just keep picking those up. It's better than picking your nose. Although some would argue. It's a few people I know, actually. And for crying out loud, do not pick your nose while you are playing with corpses. Don't. You don't need that kind of infection. You don't need your whole face to rot off. That does not fit. This is why it takes someone with patience. You have to try out each one until the slipper fits. Until the slipper feeds. Nope. Is it always the last one? We could do an experiment and see if it is always the last one. I hypothesize the last bone I try will fit, but then again that would be true either way because I'm not exactly going to fit others after. And there we go. This is a does fit. 
least in my opinion, because uh, any overlap is very minor. The curve seems to fit right, the curve on each side. But you know, I think I will try a couple, just to be sure. Because I'm stubborn that way. That does not fit. And it was not the last bone, if that one is the correct bone. So I may have proven it all wrong. All wrong. That looks like it could fit, but the color and the, the thickness just don't seem anything alike. Hmm. Uh-oh. There's a contender. Well, no, not really. Too loose on one side. What I like about something like this is at least people who think they're interested in these things. A lot of things, like if, if I were doing this with human bones, this would be really glorified. You know, the action would be really quick. And people would get the impression that it's just finding out the cool things, but that's not true. When you're finding out the cool things, it's because you have to weed through a lot of tedium. You have to weed through the squishy parts, the rotten parts, the... Alright, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say this fits and put it on. And lucky for all of you, it's actually time for me to leave the lab, which I'm sure you're very relieved. But I will be back and I will be posting videos that are actually edited too, so that you don't have to watch all the tedium. Sometimes I will just show you the quick and easy parts, like the video with the baby deer skull. Um, I've got a lot of cleaning videos coming. I've got a video of fox, dinosaurs, all sorts of stuff. So I just put way too much of that in there. Talk about wasting epoxy. All right. Way too much. So I'm just going to wipe off the sides a bit. And I must go, but we have made some progress, believe it or not. We've cut down on the number of these tiny bones that have to be put together. There has been progress made. Yay! Uh, we've put together a lot of the big ones, their ends. We have not gotten epoxy anywhere or huffed it too much, except actually I will not know how much epoxy I have breathed until I step outside into non-epoxy air. And it's, it's like you can feel, you know, the filtering in your nose and everything, the, the cartilage in there, they're just like, they just all, it just all smells like epoxy. <laughs> huh. Never put your head too close. Alright, I want to put more of these together because I love this puzzle and that's why I do this because it's, it's absolutely terrible to stop. But, I must. I have lots of things to do, especially if I'm going to put up more of these videos that are edited. Thank you for joining me. Um, I have no idea why you two people, uh, three, two, sometimes stuck around, but um, I really do appreciate it, and thank you, and I will be back on uh, Monday or Tuesday, around the same time, roughly, because I don't particularly like people or working around people. Not to say that I don't like all of you for tuning in, but I don't like people coming in while I'm working, so I literally usually haunt the place. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care. See you.